Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the Apex Town Council meeting for October the 3rd, 2017. Uh, looks like we have uh, a quorum tonight. We do recognize that Council Member Wilkie is absent tonight. In the event of a tie, the mayor does get a vote. Um, with that, I will now, I'd like to introduce for you uh, Mr. Kyle Meyer, uh, who is a pastor at uh, Peak Methodist Church. Sorry if I got the name wrong, Mr. Meyer. Uh, but come on up, uh, Mr. Meyer is going to bring our invocation for us tonight. Mayor Olive, members of town council, everyone behind me, uh, good evening. I'm going to invite us to pray together. Let us pray. Almighty God, within this room are the leaders of our great community. We thank you for them. And at the same time, O oh Lord, we pray for them. We remember that you issue strong words for those of us who wish to inhabit places of leadership and influence. Jesus, in the Gospel of Matthew, warned us, rulers of this world lorded over their people. They flaunt their authority over those under them, but among you, it must be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be the one who attends to the needs of others first. For in my kingdom, the first will become last, and the last will become first. God, my prayer is that spirit, that posture of leadership will rest on each and every one of us tonight. I pray that we might seek to become caretakers of this community, not just rule makers, not just policy crafters, not just ordinance organizers, but instead co-partners in your repairing work in the world. Help us serve as a voice for the vulnerable who need someone to stand up and speak for them. Help us serve as an example to other towns, other communities, what kindness, mercy, justice, empathy, and unity can look like. And as we have sadly been reminded this week, help us, O oh Lord, to serve as sources of your healing and comforting presence for our people who have been rocked yet again with yet another act of unexplicable suffering in Las Vegas. Before that, Puerto Rico, Florida, the Caribbean islands, Texas, and in all of the other local communities whose tragedies did not make headlines this week. Oh God, may each person in this room, whether they are in formal leadership or not, see it as their responsibility to own the future of this town, the future of our world. May we see it as our task to use whatever power, whatever influence we do have to ensure that the light outshines the darkness we all feel so heavy right now. It is in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On behalf of the council, I'd like to welcome you here tonight. I want to point out a couple of matters. One is we have some public hearings tonight, and including a public forum time, if you intend to speak. I will need your name on one of these yellow pieces of paper up here on the ledge so that I can call your name and you can come up. So if you have not yet put your name on one of those yellow pieces of paper, and they are numbered, so make sure you sign up on the correct one, uh, please come up and do so now. Uh, there's no penalty for doing so while we're continuing to uh, conduct business. The other is there's uh, an agenda out there in the hall on the podium, and if you missed it, feel free to go get one now. Lastly, if you intend to speak tonight, there is a guideline sheet. This is the yellow sheet. This tells you all the guidelines and the rules for speaking in public setting tonight. Make sure you're familiar with them. I would hate to uh, have to remind you of one of them while you're speaking, uh, but uh, if I need to, I will. Um, with that said, I'd like to continue to welcome you all here. For our presentations tonight, uh, we move into that. Presentation number one, we have a proclamation for Public Power Week. 
and we're going to present that in just a moment. Let me first turn to the town manager because he uh, has a surprise for us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is Public Power Week, and in recognition of that, our communications department has put together a short video um, highlighting some of the excellent employees that we have working for us in our electric utility. So I'd like to ask our IT department if you would roll that video. So Stacy Galloway and uh, Karen Cox are the ones responsible for the, the editing and you'll see the, the other stars of the show will show up on the screen. I've been with the town for about a year and three months now. Right, five years. I've been here for nine months. Five years. A little over 18 years. I've been with the town for 20 years. Everybody's like a family. Um, we just enjoy each other and have fun. It's what makes it so easy to jump out of bed and come to work every day. We ain't friends with family. And, um, you know, we spend most time with each other more than, you know, our family, so a bunch of good guys. We are a big part of what keeps the power on. We, you know, we help prevent trees, limbs, or anything like that falling on the lines. It doesn't matter, rain, cold, hot, snow, we, we are out there. And I think people really appreciate that. It's all about the beautification of the trees, because I'm here for the trees. This is going to sound funny. Electricity second. Through the proper training and schooling, we can always have the beautification of trees and a safe, reliable electrical source to our customers. The Christmas parade, I think that was, that was an awesome experience. We basically had to devise a nice float for everybody to see and to portray what we do and then that really opened the customer's eyes I think and it created good positive interaction. I got to experience my first uh, storm when Hurricane Matthew we got to go to Red Springs and help out. Our last night in Red Springs we're standing there and they're in the substation throwing the switches in and you start seeing lights come on. It's just kind of heartwarming you know when you see lights come on. It's kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, this is a this is a great bunch of guys. The town spends a lot of time and effort, money into training these guys, and we want everybody to stick around and uh, you know to to love Apex as much as much as I do. Just curious, is anybody here from the department? <laughs> the uh, interim director, uh, Rodney Smith, is here, and Ken Weatherman is here. One of our Rodney, back there? Line. All right, very good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And please tell uh, Stacy and Karen thank you for the video. That was very good. And Mr. Smith would be honored to receive that proclamation All right. from you. Very good. Um, so, Mr. Smith, I'm going to read this out and then uh, have you come up. 
This is for Public Power Week 2017. Whereas the Apex Electric Department provides our homes and businesses with reliable, efficient, and cost-effective electricity, employing sound business practices designed to ensure the best possible service at not-for-profit rates, and whereas the Apex Electric Department is a valuable community asset that contributes to the well-being of local citizens through energy efficiency, customer service, environmental protection, economic development, and safety awareness, and whereas the Apex Electric Department is a dependable and trustworthy institution whose local operation continues to make our community a better place to live and work, and whereas we, the governing body of Apex, place high value on having local control over community services and therefore have chosen to operate a community-owned electric utility, and as customers and owners of our electric utility have a direct say in utility operations and policies, now therefore be it resolved that the Apex Electric Department will continue to work to bring low-cost, safe, reliable electricity to Apex homes and businesses, just as it has since 1917, the year when the utility was created to serve all the citizens of Apex. Be it further resolved that the week of October 1st through 7th be designated Public Power Week to recognize the Apex Electric Department for its year-round service and contributions to the community to educate customers, policymakers, and employees on the benefits of public power. And be it further resolved that our community joins hands with more than 2,000 other public power systems in the United States in this celebration of public power. In witness hereof, I've, I've set my hand and caused the seal of the town of Apex to be affixed this the third day of October 2017. Come on up, Rodney. Perhaps a man of few words, but many volts. <laughs> what? It's bad. It's so bad. <laughs> All right, at this time we'll move on to the consent agenda. This is the part where we uh, review the items that are considered to be routine. Many of these items are considered to be uh, things that are non-controversial. However, if any council member wishes to pull one for further discussion, they certainly can do so. Uh, but most of the time we enact them all with a single motion. So at this time I'd like to ask the council if there is an item to be pulled or is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items in full. Any further discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Okay, that passes unanimously. We now move to the setting of the regular agenda. At the bottom of page two, you'll see that's where we do that. A uh, couple of things I'd like to point out and maybe ask as part of the motion. Uh, first, just to acknowledge that public hearing number two will not be heard tonight, so if you happen to be here for that item, uh, we will not be re reviewing or discussing that item at all tonight. Uh, secondly, the public hearing number three, the staff has requested a continuance that does require a council uh, action, so I would like to request that we consider that one before we start public hearing number one so that we can uh, dispense with that and then move on. So if anyone is here for that one, they can know that we've positively done something and moved on. They can head home. Uh, and that would, be, that would be it for the agenda, correct? All right, is there a motion to approve of the agenda with uh, those items noted? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, no. All right, that motion passes unanimously. Okay, so at this time we now move into public forum. And as you can see, the town clerk has picked up the yellow sheets. So it, during the public forum time where we would normally uh, entertain uh, folks who have anything on their mind they'd like to share, just anything at all. I have no one that signed up, so we will uh, have no public forum, even though I can open it and close it formally. Uh, no one has chosen to speak on that, but we do have some sign-ins for the further public hearings, and we will get to those shortly. Uh, now moving into the public hearings, I'd like to, uh, as we agreed, 
discuss public hearing number three. The staff has continued to, or asked uh, us to continue this to October 17th at the regularly scheduled meeting. Is there a motion to do so? I make a motion to continue item uh, public hearing three to the 17th. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this to October 17th at the regularly scheduled meeting. Any discussion on that motion? Okay, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. All right, public hearing number three will be heard October 17th. That brings us to public hearing number one. Public hearing number one is a public hearing and possible motion for rezoning number 17 CZ15 Peak City Properties LLC. And presenting tonight, Ms. Liz Lofton. Good evening. This is public hearing number one, rezoning case 17 CZ15. This item was continued from the August 15th meeting. The property is located at 200 West Chatham Street, Apex Baptist Church is to the south, Apex Police Department is to the north, and Salem Street is to the east. Um, the existing structure, built around 1920, is a late Victorian-style building with a pyramidal, pyramidal hipped roof. The 1928 Sanborn map indicates this property was the telephone exchange at one time. The structure is located um, in the Apex National Historic District and is a contributing structure. The site is also located in the Small Town Character Overlay District. The property is currently zoned mixed office residential retail conditional use case number 05CU11. Under the current zoning, a single family residence or professional office is allowed by right. Bed and breakfast is also permitted with a special use permit. The applicant conducted a neighborhood meeting on May 25th and a copy of the neighborhood meeting report is included in the staff report. The applicant is requesting that only one use, medical or dental office, be added to the list of already permitted uses. The 2030 land use map classifies the subject property as mixed use, medium density, residential, office employment, or commercial services. The proposed rezoning to MORRCZ is consistent with the land use classification. The planning board um, did hold a um, public hearing on this item on August 14th, and they recommended denial by a 6-1 vote. The board based their decision on lack of sufficient parking. Parking is typically reviewed at the site plan or certificate of zoning compliance stage, not at the time of rezoning. For information purposes only, medical office or dental clinic requires one space per 200 square feet of the <coughs> floor area. The applicant has indicated they propose to convert approximately 2,200 square feet, therefore the applicant would be required 11 parking spaces. Based on the UDO section 6.3.1 in the small town character, Striped on-street parking and municipal parking lots may be utilized to meet all or part of the parking requirements. <coughs> Provided that said parking is located no more than 300 feet from the subject lot or parcel. After the planning board meeting in August, staff conducted a review of the area within 300 feet and created the map to determine that there are a total of 15 parking spaces within this range. Pictures of the parking spaces within 300 feet are included in the staff report. Um, please keep in mind that the map um, with the 300 foot radius was not available at the time of the planning board meeting. Planning board staff can recommend approval with the conditions as proposed because the area calls for mixed use development of the 2030 land use map and the use proposed um, could be established within the existing historic structure without substantial <coughs> exterior modifications. Diane also has some items of information for you. Good evening. 
Uh, you should have received this handout at your desk when you came today. Um, it's an explanation of the historic use of the property at 200 West Chatham Street. As Liz mentioned, it was um, in 1928 uh, the telephone exchange. Um, typically, prior to zoning, people did live and work um, often in buildings, and this one was one that was particularly called out as a non-residential use at that time. Um, also wanted to uh, uh, direct your attention to the history of the MORR district on the 200th block of Chatham Street. Um, it was included in the original UDO that was adopted <coughs> on August 1st, 2000. The purpose of uh, the MORR district was to allow businesses within homes but allow flexibility to go back to residential. Um, and um, so the 200th block of West Chatham was rezoned from O and I to M O R R C U in July of 2005, and the main purpose uh, was so that folks would have flexibility to go back and forth between the two um, uses, residential and um, non-residential. And um, basically, the zoning of O and I made living in those homes a non-conforming use, and so. Um, the folks did want to have the flexibility to have either uses um, allowed. Um, and I just wanted to point out that if they only wanted to be able to live in the homes and not use them for business purposes, the request would have been to medium density residential and not to MORR district. Um, the next section is history of, of the adaptive reuse ordinance. Um, the adaptive reuse ordinance was added to the UDO on March 16, 2010. Um, it was requested by citizens who wanted to protect the historic homes and make sure that new non-residential uses would be good neighbors uh, after the properties downtown started uh, rezoning to MRR. <coughs> and so then the second page is um, my interpretation of the section 631I1, the purpose statement. Um, and the use of conjunctions in the UDO. I know this gets into really nitty gritty stuff, so I'll let you read it, but basically the use of or means that uh, one or more of the connected items applies. The use of and means all of the connected items apply. And so you're gonna hear some arguments about all three needing to apply, and that's not the case under the way the UDO is currently written. If you have any questions about that, particularly after public comment, I'd be happy to answer your questions. All right. Thank you, Diane. Um, at this time, let me just ask, are there any questions of staff before we go to the public hearing? What are some of the allowable uses um, in the MORR? Medical dental is not allowed currently, but what are some of the currently allowed uses? Are you, is your question, what is the laundry list? Because there's probably... There's probably like 30 one, or something. Yeah, 20 or 30. 20 or 30 of them. Did you want to hear all of them? Um, the only one they're requesting to add is the medical and dental office. Of because in 2005 it was excluded? It was not included. It was not included in the, re in the uh, request. So sort of similar uses of the, uh, allowed, though, like uh, I think chiropractor is allowed, right? That's medical. Or dental office. In the M well, isn't there a chiropractor across the street? It's the MORR district. Yeah, so so theoretically, a chiropractor can go in the. It's medical and dental yeah. office would be allowed. Yes, okay. MORR district has a lot of uses. I can read them if you like. Is that what you? Uh, what's your guess? Thirty different uses, probably. What's what? Maybe even more. Maybe more than that. No, I don't think there's any need to read them at this point. Okay. Yeah. Professional would be like legal lawyers. Anything that's not medical or dental. Anything not medical. <laughs> or dental too. So medical and dental is not professional. Medical and dental means that you went to school and you got a degree in a medical related <laughs> field and dental you'd be a dental related field. Um, any other professional, whether it's an architect or engineer or a um, you know, lawyer, that those are all considered professional. And the reason is the amount of appointments that are potentially could be staggered or concurrent. Typically, professional offices 
do not have the staggering of appointments the way that a medical and dental office would. I see. Okay, thank you. So to answer Mr. Scholz's question, a chiropractor could not currently go into this space because that medical dental was left out. That's correct. For this one. And anyone that has a medical related right, right, profession. Okay. <clears throat> Any further questions for staff? All right, thank you, Diane. At this time, uh, I'd like to open the public hearing. Uh, before I do, there are a couple of uh, key things I want to point out. Um, the third bullet on the public uh, speaking policy, there's one person per household requested. Uh, so 210 South Salem Street, I see two speakers have signed up. Uh, looks like Laura Grimes and Don Grimes. I request that you either share the three minutes or one of you take your turn. Uh, the same for 108 Minifer Court. Um, either pick one or you can come up together, but that's one three minutes uh, per household. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to open the public hearing and begin down my list. Uh, Kelly Vio uh, is the first one up. Um, and while she's coming up, it looks like uh, Penny McGuire is going to be next, uh, so feel free to be ready. And uh, just before we start, I'd like to point out we've got a three-minute timer. There's a green light, yellow light, red light on the uh, podium here. The town clerk will operate that light. When it goes yellow, you should be begin wrapping up. And when it's red, I'll, I'll then stop you. Yes, actually, well, yes, um, Ms. Vio, since you're the applicant here, um, typically the applicant gets the equivalent of three three-minute sessions. So if you'd like nine minutes, you're welcome to use as much of that as you need to. Uh, my name is Dr. Kelly Vio, and I'm the general dentist and owner of Peak City Family Dentistry in downtown Apex, currently located at 103 North Salem Street. So I'm an established business already in downtown Apex. I've owned this dental practice since 2013 when I purchased the practice from Dr. Prince Arrington and the Creative Smile Center. The growth of the practice and technology that I've introduced into the practice has um, caused my current space to become an issue. So I'm requesting the zoning <coughs> modification as um, zoning modification of my residence on 200 West Chatham Street. I currently live in the property with my family. Less than four f 400 feet away door to door to allow me um, to move into a more suitable location for the dental practice. I know there's been some concerns from residents nearby over at, um, available street parking and I, I do understand that downtown Apex parking is a little bit of a challenge. Fortunately, I'm not a new business coming to the area and I would be moving around the corner, therefore I wouldn't be bringing an additional um, burden to the area. My patients currently park on Salem Street or at Apex Baptist Church where I have um, worked out a shared parking agreement with Apex Baptist. Um, my staff has gone out to actually count the number of available parking spaces during the day. Um, on average at 10 a.m. on a Monday or Tuesday, there's been um, 180 spots available. How many? 180. Um, at 2 p.m., 162 spots available. So those are open spots with nobody parked in them at that, at that time. I generally see between three to four patients an hour, so there's ample parking in that area. Um, residents have also had some concerns over rumored revoked parking from other <coughs> businesses in the area that have worked with Apex Baptist Church. Um, Apex Baptist did not revoke any parking, and it's been very neighborly to, to me and other businesses in the area. Um, that aside, city planning has demonstrated that I have fulfilled the UDO parking requirement. So there are the required parking that, that I would be, you know, obligated to have for to meet the requirement has been fulfilled. Um, truth be told, my patients will probably continue to park at Apex Baptist Church. They're, they're conditioned to park there. So um, even though we fulfill the requirement, they will more than likely, after all these years, continue to park on Salem Street or, on, or at Apex Baptist Church. We have the, the capability to communicate with them um, through emails, um, to remind them to park the church. Um, we realize during school time it gets busier, and so we're able to communicate to them over the phone to new patients and also periodically through email to please park there and respect um, the resident. There has also been some concerns if my patients do park at Apex Baptist Church that there's a preschool pickup and drop off during certain months of the year, um, that the parking lot isn't available theoretically. The parking lot is still accessible um, 
from both, and I think I have it in the handout that you, you should have it, <coughs> from both Holloman Street and from Salem Street. So even if they can't access it from Chatham Street, there's still available parking with a, a small walk that most people are used to when they come to downtown Apex and can still have parking. My patient hours are Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., occasional Friday morning. Several businesses in downtown Apex are closed on Mondays. It's a ghost town. You can park anywhere you want, you know, in, up until about lunchtime on a Monday to come to my practice. Many uh, um, businesses don't even open until 10 or 11 the rest of the week. So my hours are not responsible for o overwhelming the parking demands in downtown Apex. My employees are also required to park at Apex Baptist Church to leave available parking open for um, Salem Street and on Chatham Street for visitors to the area. Um, as city planning mentioned, the west block of Chatham Street down to Jones Street is currently zoned for MORR. The town's intention for this area is to be an extension of the business, business district. In fact, there's a sign on the corner of Chatham and Salem Street that points to more retail coming down to Chatham Street. Um, also, moving an additional, moving my established business off of Salem Street would allow for another retailer that relies more on foot traffic than I do during those peak hours of evenings and weekends. I understand that doesn't mean that every building that's on Chatham Street should be converted to a business. Um, we don't want to overwhelm the growth and we don't want to disturb the charm of the area, but there really have not been any other businesses added to this area in over 10 years. Um, so I think that, you know, converting one more would be consistent with the, the peak plan and the land use map of 2030. <coughs> Businesses are what draw people to the downtown, and that's what make people want to live downtown <coughs> and be able to walk there. Um, otherwise, it would just be another area with a lot of houses, with a lot of beautiful trees and historic homes, which are amazing. But the downtown is what draws people down there and want to live there. Also, if you want to keep in line with the early 1920s, doctors and dentists were often in the city center. There's also been some concerns with replacing a historical residence with a business. You know, they talked about the purpose of MORR, and I won't read through that, but basically it's just a mix of residential, professional office, and retail uses. This particular zoning allows for residents to become businesses and vice versa. Con um, a conversion from this house into a residence into a dental practice in no way eliminates the future conversion back to a residence. Dental chairs are pieces of furniture. X-ray tubes are now portable and the size of a police radar gun. They're not mounted to the walls. Big lead walls aren't required anymore. Everything's gone digital, so it's changed significantly. Air and water lines are thin tubes that run under the floor. This particular house was renovated in 2007 from its original state in 1920. It was jacked up um, and put a, a, a standing crawl space, so air water lines could easily be added. If it wanted to be, you know, if we wanted to convert it back to residence, they could be taken away. If I move the chairs in my operatories now, there's a small hole in the floor where those lines come through. So it, it can be easily converted back to a residence. Um, in addition, I mentioned that the house was renovated. An addition was added to the back of the house. Again, it, the house has not maintained its original <coughs> 1920s um, original floor plan. The exterior looks the same, and, and that has been maintained, but the house has been renovated to its original state. Exterior aesthetics would also be maintained, and any improvements would be under the guidance of small town character of the house, so the charm of the house would not be changed in any way. Um, realistically, there would be more available capital to make exterior improvements as a business than it would as a resident. There's actually um, some members of the Apex Historical Society here tonight that, um, you know, I think there was some discussion about this, and in general, they may be able to speak to um, the house is, is already preserved. Their big concern is that the house is preserved. It doesn't matter if it's preserved as a business or if it's preserved as a residence. The main objective is to preserve the house to, to the best possibility, and either house or business, it doesn't matter. This practice has been a successful business in downtown Apex since 1984. It was here when some businesses were boarded up, it survived the recession, and it's seen many businesses come and go over the years. I can't take um, credit for, the, for all those 34 years, I've only owned the practice for the past four, but I can say it's a strong practice with an excellent reputation. 
Um, and in the five years that we've been here, Peak City Family, or four years, Peak City Family Dentistry has become a major contributor to downtown. We participate and we promote all the festivals. Um, I just recently purchased over a thousand toothbrushes to give out for the kids on Trick or Treat on Salem Street and Glow in the Dark Fangs and Sugar Free Candy, so at least the kids will still like me when it's all over. Um, we're getting ready to have our fifth annual open house um, at, at the night of uh, the Christmas tree lighting in downtown Apex where I personally cook and feed all our patients that, are, that come downtown and any people that are downtown. We always have a full house. Um, and actually many patients plan their Christmas cards around this because they um, wait to have the picture taken by our tree. So overall, we love the downtown. I love being part of the history and the charm. I'm not looking to change that. I'm looking to add to that. And I hope that um, we can be here for another 34 years. I've also attached a letter of support from many of the businesses downtown that's in the packet as well. And I appreciate your time and consideration. All right, thank you, Ms. Villa. Mr. Mayor, mm. is, why don't they use the microphone? Um, there is one on the table. IT is right here. Um, I'm on Jumbo. I can hardly understand the word. All right. Well, Thank you. I'll, Thank you. all right. I got you. Um, IT folks, if you can't, if if you can help us, that'd be great. Uh, I don't know. I think it was the little desk mic that she was in front of. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. All right. Thank you. Um, let me ask uh, Penny McGuire. Come on up. Okay, I'm a retired teacher. I should be good with the microphone. Very good. All right. <laughs> my name is Penny McGuire. I live at 210 West Chatham Street, and I have lived there for over 40 years. My neighbors and I are united in our opposition to this rezoning request. I do appreciate the time it took you to read the document I sent you, which provides details for the points I am going to outline now. As I stated in that document, most of us have lived on West Chatham for some time, and as a result, we have all experienced considerable change in downtown Apex and in our contiguous neighborhood. I do not know if any of you have walked down Chatham Street regularly or lately, but with these changes have come challenges, especially with parking. Since 2015, there have been 15 calls for service to the police department over parking issues, and more have gone reported unreported. We have been, we think, good neighbors. We have accepted the current zoning with the belief that it strikes a balance between residential and business usage and that the traffic associated with such office use is respectful of and compatible with the residential use. It is our position that the current rezoning request is both unwarranted and incompatible with the needs of the residents of the neighborhood. The level of pedestrian and vehicular activity associated with the type of business included in this rezoning will be intrusive to us as neighbors. As a result, the rezoning will have a negative impact on the quality of life for the current residents. Kelly and Kevin have offered a letter as evidence of a contract with Apex Baptist Church to solve the parking problem, and the planning department has cited parking spaces on Saunders Street. While they look good on paper, neither of these is feasible because bottom line, it is human nature to park as close as possible to your destination. In fact, the hotter, the wetter, the colder it is, the closer people want to park to their destination. All of these factors direct the traffic to on-street parking rather than the church parking lots or the Saunders Street spaces that have been identified. And the proposed move from Salem to Chatham, while well, just around the corner, specifically redirects them from a near Salem Street focus where parking spaces are shared among businesses to an on Chatham Street focus where parking spaces are shared with residents. Because this is an older neighborhood, we already have shared driveways, short driveways, and no driveways. We all depend on on-street parking to one degree or another. Apex's own UDO states, the expected use of on-street parking shall not be such that it would cause undue negative impact upon other uses within the immediate vicinity that may rely upon the availability of such parking. Maintaining the small town charm for which Apex is noted requires a balance between residential and business. Neither should overwhelm or dominate the other. Tipping the balance between resident and business uses will soon make Chatham Street and Apex look a lot like Chatham Street and Cary, all commerce and no charm. There are other dental practices in downtown Apex and they have managed to locate their offices in areas that are already appropriately zoned and that provide on-site independent parking. We feel Kelly and Kevin need to do the same. We believe that a cost-benefit analysis of this proposal would conclude that the cost to the neighborhood of the proposed rezoning would be high and the benefits nil. 
We ask that you heed the recommendation from the Planning Board that recommended denying the zoning request by a margin of six to one. Thank you, Ms. McGuire. Well timed. I timed it on my kitchen stove. Well done. <laughs> All right, next is Laura Grimes. And and or Don, whichever you choose. Uh, one or the other, or both at the same time. There's one one three minute period per address. Come on up, or I'm gonna go to the next person. If you ha if you are going to speak on behalf of more than three people. All right, do you have more than three people that live near you that you that will allow you to speak for them? Yes. Can I see a show of hands who wants them to speak on your behalf? In other words, you're not going to be coming up to speak as well. On my behalf, yes. How many, raise them high. I can't. Not, not One, not two. No, they're on. They're on. Come on up. Come on up, Laura. Miss Grimes, come on up. We we can't do this all night. Come on up. Yes, sir. Okay. Where in the regulations does it have to say? It's right here. It's right here. Third bullet. Is that then certified and approved and voted on by the town board? No, this is the policy that I introduced earlier and I told you about it at the beginning. Come on, your time is wasting. Go ahead and start the timer, please. Okay, let me have to say that who's supporting myself? Uh, my neighbors, the Shirley's, and also Hamilton Martin. Well, hang on a second. What are you trying to claim? I want to be clear what you're saying. Are you speaking on their behalf? That's right. Yes. Can I see your hands who are allowing them to speak on your behalf? One, two, three. And you're not coming up to speak tonight, right? Okay. You go ahead. All right, y'all. If you two want to have nine minutes together, go for it. Okay. That would be 12, right? No, sir. Nine minutes together. No, sir. Nine minutes together. In order for this historic residential property to be rezoned to allow a dental office, it must meet the objective criteria contained in the adaptive reuse provisions of the UDO, which I hope you're familiar with. These were enacted for the sole purpose of protecting historic residential properties from being unnecessarily converted to other uses, any other uses, including dental offices. The proposed rezoning does not comply with the stated purpose of the adaptive reuse provisions, which is to permit a change of use from residential only and only when the property is no longer useful for the purposes for which it was originally designed, which was a residence. There are three factors contained in the ordinance to be considered. Number one is obsolescence of use, current use. Another is changes of zoning. In the, in the immediate vicinity. The other is changes in land use in the immediate area. This historic National Register property was originally designed as a residence and has been and continues to be used as a residence by petitioner who acquired the property as her family home in 2016. My friend uh, Hamilton Martin, who is a, a lifetime resident of, of Apex and is my unfortunate age of 72, says that that house has never been used for anything other than a residence during his entire lifetime. And he had an uncle and aunt who lived there for at least 40 years. <clears throat> and at the hearing uh, before the planning board, petitioner described her home as beautiful and well-constructed inside and out. It is incontrovertible that the property continues to be used and useful as a single family residence. With regard to zoning changes and land use changes, the vast majority of the properties in the 100 and 200 blocks of West Chatham Street have been and continue to be residences. In 2006, all but two of these properties, including the subject property, were rezoned from office and institutional to mixed use office and residential for the express purpose of making residential a permitted use in that district. <clears throat> and for those properties and in fact limiting those uses to residential and office, business office. Since 2006, that rezoning in 2006, two properties within that West Chatham Street, and I, here they are right here, and, I, and the uh, clerk was supposed to hand you copies of it. These two properties, one on either side of the subject property, 
have been converted from uh, businesses to residences. <clears throat> the only property that, is not, that has been converted from a residence to a business is the chiropractic office at 207 West Stratum, where due to errors on the part of the town planning department, the council had no choice but to rezone it, no choice. The only conclusion that can be drawn from this recent history is that since 2006, the clear movement and direction of zoning and use in the 100 and 200 blocks of West Chatham Street is one, to establish residential as a permitted use, and two, to convert business properties into residences. And for that reason, to approve this rezoning would be a clear violation of the town's own objective criteria for the adaptive reuse of a historic residence. This proposed zoning is also a clear example of spot zoning, which has been defined by the Supreme Court of North Carolina as a zoning ordinance which singles out and reclassifies a relatively small tract owned by a single person and surrounded by a much larger uniformly zoned, uh, an area, a much larger area uniformly zoned, so as to relieve the small tract from restrictions which the rest of the surrounding properties are subjected to. In Covington versus Town of Apex, the North Carolina Court of Appeals stated the following in support of its decision to reject the rezoning. An essential element of spot zoning is a small tract of land owned by a single person and surrounded by a much larger area uniformly zoned. Plaintiff supporting materials showed that the parcel of land was a small rectangular lot, 100 by 275 feet in size, and owned by one owner. Plaintiffs also presented materials which showed that the vast majority of the land surrounding the subject property is uniformly zoned. Those facts are identical to this case, except that this parcel is much smaller and the surrounding properties are more uniformly zoned than in that particular case. The court then considered whether there was a reasonable basis for the rezoning and stated that a rezoning which makes for the exclusive and preferential benefit of such particular landowner with no relation to the community as a whole is not a valid exercise of sovereign power and held that there was little or no public benefit and a substantial personal financial benefit to the petitioner. The only public benefit alleged in this petition is that the rezoning will, I quote, will improve access to care for residents of Apex, office located on Salem Street currently and just around the corner. By petitioner's own wording, the benefit to the public would be minimal, if any. Access to dental care is not an issue here because there are at least 17 other dental offices in Apex alone, not to mention in the surrounding communities. Instead, it would be detrimental to the public because additional parking resources would be required to accommodate a replacement business on Salem Street. In Mahaffey v. Forsyth County, the Supreme Court cited the planning board's recommendation of denial as an important factor in rejecting a rezoning. As clearly stated in the 2030 land use plan and the UDO's adaptive reuse ordinance, it is well established public policy of the town of Apex to protect and maintain its historic properties and to discourage the arbitrary and unnecessary conversion of historic residential properties to other uses. This spot zoning attempt fails on every test of validity and should be rejected, as the planning board has emphatically done by a nearly unanimous vote. Thank you. I'm going to continue. Um, I'd like to discuss the municipal parking lot that's been offered by the town as an alternative for parking. I included a little photograph I'd like you folks to look at if you don't mind. Uh, they offered 11 regular and two handicapped spaces in this parking lot. And if you look at this little map that I included, which staff offered you, um, they contend it's within 300 feet of 200 West Chatham Street. The parking lot faces the police department, which is directly behind Dr. Vio's current home. So one of Dr. Vio's handicapped patients would have to park in this parking lot right here, 
cross the street, step over the barricade at the uh, police department, scale the wall at the back of the lot, vault over a deep ravine with a creek, and climb up a 50-foot gradient through the woods to the back of 200 Chatham Street. This is the hiking option, okay, that meets the 300 linear foot requirements. Otherwise, we have the walking option, which would be to go up South Saunders to Commerce Street, turn right, walk up the hill, take another right to West Chatham. This is the shortest walking distance and takes up 701 feet, more than the length of two football fields. It's highly unlikely that a handicapped person or anyone else would take these routes. I mean, think about it. And uh, in addition, staff offers two spaces at the intersection of South Salem and West Chatham for parking. These spaces are currently allocated as loading zones, where parking is limited to 15 minutes while using flashing lights. I just can't see a patient doing this. It should be clear that given the fact that there's no marked parking on West Chatham Street, that the petitioner has only a parking pad to offer for parking, off-street parking, and that this other thing that is available... Please finish your sentence. Uh, it's clear that there is that there really is no UDO prescribed parking in the 100 and 200 blocks. It doesn't right. exist. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Thorpe, did you want to speak or were they speaking for you? I, di I didn't see your hand earlier, so you're up. You're up if you're yeah. speaking. Well, I'm up here with the idiot business owners downtown that will please stand. Hi, those that don't know me, uh, I'm Mac Thorpe. My wife and I own the Rusty Bucket at 104A North Salem Street. I'm here representing over 20 businesses downtown that have signed a petition that the good doctor has put together in support of her moving her practice to Chatham Street. And uh, unless you have any questions of me, I, we're here just to support her, and we believe in her plan as balanced and protects the historical value of the home as well as good for business in the neighborhood. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thorpe. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, I, when you were standing, can you just put your hands up again, those who were in support of what Mr. Thorpe said? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thorpe. Uh, Jamie Rohrbach. Where's the timer? The green, it's the lights there. Oh. So it'll be green, yellow, then okay. red. There you go. Okay. Um, my name is Jamie Roebuck. I am the owner of the property at 202 West Chatham Street, which is located directly next door um, to 200 West Chatham Street. I purchased the property in January of 2011. The appeal of the property was that it was mix mixed use specifically so that I could operate my small business <coughs> from the property and also have a home for my mother. I wanted to give a bit of a different perspective because I am a business owner who still operates a business in downtown Apex. I moved my business um, up on Salem Street um, at the other end, but I operated a business out of 202 West Chatham Street until March of 2015 when my business became too large for the space. Just prior to moving, I had three employees, including myself in the office full-time with one part-time employee along with my mother living in the home. We used a total of three parking spaces on the street while my mother parked her vehicle in the driveway. Our daily parking had already begun to spill in front of our neighbor's home, taking up her valuable street parking. In addition, there were many days the chiropractic office patients would park in front of the same neighbor's home or our office, leaving us to park even further down the street. After adding a fourth employee, it was time to find a more appropriate space that would be suitable for both office space and parking spaces. My office is located at 315 South Salem Street, a property that is specifically zoned to afford the needed space, both internally and externally. As I did with my business, I believe that Peak City properties should find a more suitable property with appropriate zoning for the type of client and vehicle traffic that they have indicated that they will have on a daily basis. With seven employees and 15 to 25 patients per day, 
This is not enough parking to support such a large business and its need for close parking will deeply impact the residents of this neighborhood. I have, and I won't go into again about the South Saunders Street parking, but I think that was, that was pretty clear about um, people not walking up the alley and walking that far. I will tell you, my office was in the front of that building and I sat there for two and a half years and looked out that window every day at that parking and I can tell you that it is an issue. I don't care what it looks like on a map. I don't care, and no disrespect for the staff that looked at the parking, but there's not enough parking there. People will just humanly park as close as they can to the door that they're going to. Um, one of my main goals in purchasing the property of 202 West Chatham Street was to have a home and a neighborhood for my mother as she grows older. I'm asking the board to deny the rezoning of Peak City Properties the rezoning request is not compatible with surrounding zoning and certainly does not help to preserve the small town character of downtown Apex. Thank you, Ms. Robert. Thanks. Uh, Jacqueline Ferguson. And then uh, John Pearson will be next after that. Well, my name is Jackie Ferguson, and my daughter is Jamie Roebuck, who just spoke. And she owns the home, as she said, where I live now. Uh, Jamie chose this home for its neighborly small town feel so and I could enjoy it for the rest of my life. You know, and my leisurely walks often on the way to the robust Salem Street remind me of how nice our neighborhood is and I chat with a neighbor or two along the way. It's it's just everything you would think of in a small town neighborly feel. You know, some of some of our neighbors are friends, some are acquaintances, some are just neighbors. Some people I don't even know their name, but regardless, we still look after each other. You know, we check on our homes, our pets, our property. We we all know things about each other, even if we don't know everything about each other. Um, and uh, I hope you'll take all this into consideration and that you'll make every effort to preserve our neighborhood and uh, oppose the rezoning of 200 West Chatham Street. Thank you, Ms. Ferguson. Thank you. Uh, John Pearson. I'm John Pearson, and I'm a lifelong resident of Apex. I was born here in 1943, so I'm probably older than all of you and older than most of the people in this room, and I walked the streets of Apex when I was growing up, including... Chatham Street, Salem Street, <coughs> Center Street, and all these streets, and I'm very familiar with the houses who lived in them and so forth. What I, my comments are a perspective on the situation and some insight into similar situations. My <coughs> thoughts on the situation is I think the zoning doesn't have to be changed, but an additional use of this house should be added. It's a simple thing of using it as a dental office. A dental office doesn't take a lot of work to turn it into dental cubicles and so forth. It's furniture and little walls and things like that. It can be undone, and I can cite you a couple examples. Um, Dr. Paul Pearson, my uncle, had an office at Salem and Center up over what is now the bakery downtown. It was set up when he started his practice here in the early 1900s. He later moved out, it was redone, his offices reused, so it can be done. He then moved his office out onto Olive Chapel Road, put it in a house, converted it into an office, and after he died, the house was converted back into a residence, and it's rented out now, and it's easy to do. <coughs> My cousin, Dr. John Kent Pearson, had his medical practice in the house next to the new little barber shop and two houses away from this house in question. It was used as a doctor's office for 30, 40 years by two different doctors. It was converted back into a residence. It was converted into a store. All that is easy to do and undo. And it doesn't impact on a neighborhood. People park where they can. You can park at the Baptist Church. You can park on Salem Street. You can park in front of the church. All those things are floating parking places for everybody. I don't know what the rules are in Apex, but where I have lived outside of town and come back here, Parking on the street is not owned by the residents, it's owned by the town and the state and the owner of the roads. So 
you park as close as you can to your house. And when you have to park a little way away, you walk to your house or business or whatever you're going to do. It's doable. It, it doesn't really hurt anybody except people that have trouble walking, and that can be worked out. <coughs> um, I go to two dental offices, not at this one. I, I may give it a try. I go to one in Four Oaks, and I go to one in downtown Pittsburgh. They are both in old historic houses, just like this situation. They put walls and cubicles and sat chair, furniture on the floor and hooked up their dental equipment, and they're perfectly good. They are in residential neighborhoods. It works. It does not disrupt the neighborhood. It does not disrupt parking next door. You park on the street. You park in the driveway. You park wherever you can. And those work out very good. Uh, so I, I don't, I, I hear all these arguments that, oh, parking is going to be terrible. Nobody's going to be able to park anymore. But the people that work in the dental office and the customers that go to the dental office now already park in those parking places. Right, finish up. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. And that's pretty much it. I'm in favor of it. I think it ought to be added as a use for the house. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Pearson. <clears throat> uh, so now uh, the 108 Minifer Court. I, it looks like Jimmy Hartojo, or I'm sorry if I'm not able to read this very well. Alawiki? Sorry. Are either of them here? Okay, one or both of you can come speak. Do you want to speak on this issue? Yeah. Oh, no, okay. All right. Uh, then Amy Terrence, um, Brady Terrence, you can speak. <laughs> yeah, come on up, the two of you. You get, yeah, you get a three minute Fabulous. time Thank segment. You. Okay. Hi, I'm Amy Terrence and my husband, Brady Terrence. Mm -hmm. I am here just to support Kelly Vio and the dental practice. Um, <clears throat> I have grown up in Apex since I was six years old. I grew up on Kelly Road when it was the middle of nowhere. I was proud to be on the paved part. Mm -hmm. um, my mom taught at Bauckham for years. She was a PE teacher there. She just retired a few years ago. And um, I would be the first to tell you if I thought that this would be a bad idea. I am all for Apex. I have to say it brought tears to my eyes when the prayer was said when we came in here and just the pride with the Pledge of Allegiance, I was like, this is my apex. And um, I just have to say that I think moving a dental office around the corner, a block, is not going to change my apex. It is just going to enhance it. The part of having a community and having apex become so wonderful, and it's kind of boring when I was a kid, but it's gotten to be so wonderful because there are neighborhood shops, single-owned shops, single-owned businesses, restaurants, and to have a neighborhood dentist, I mean, that's fabulous. It's something that I just think adds to the community. And I have known Kelly Vio for a long time. She takes pride in her work. She takes pride in the way the office looks and the way she presents herself. Her family is wonderful. She will do nothing but look for the best interests of Apex and downtown Apex and the residents living around that home. And, you know, she, she is nothing but positive and kind and respectful to others. She is not doing this to disrespect the neighbors on Chatham Street. And like I said, I would be the first to say if I thought it would negatively impact anyone that I've grown up with since childhood, some teachers. And, um, you know, I just, um, I'm just really in support of it. I really think there are areas in Apex where people should be involved and, you know, say, hey, you know, this can't happen. This will change it negatively. This is not one of those times. Um, like I mentioned before, I know you're not supposed to double mention things, but people park in downtown Apex for different businesses, to visit family, to visit friends. In that space, it could be a popular lawyer, a popular family that has parties. It could be, you know, a lawyer's office that is really busy. But um, parking is going to be the same issue anyway. In a downtown area, when there's businesses, shops, neighborhood, dentists, you know, there's, people are going to have to find a place to park. And um, I agree. I think that the people who live in these houses, I mean, they want, I, I see where they're coming from, but I don't think this is something that, um, you know, they need to worry about. And I'm just in full support of having that dental office there, and I don't think it's going to negatively impact um, anyone, and I, she would not want it to. Thank you, Ms. Terrence. Did you yeah. yield the rest of your time to Mr. Yeah. Terrence? You're okay. Absolutely. Okay. I'm, just, I'm, I'm in full <laughs> support of, of Dr. View and her, her practice downtown. I think it 
does nothing but enhance the community. All right, very good. Time. Thank, Thank you both. You. Thank you both. All right, that concludes uh, our public hearing for, for item number one. Um, and so at this time, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, let me, before we uh, begin discussion with the council, uh, let me ask the town attorney uh, a question. There was a mention of a spot zoning um, in this potential situation. Um, is that an item that either you can uh, talk to us about in here or in a closed session? I don't know which would be appropriate, but. If you'd like to talk about the factors um, for getting spot zoning in this location, I'd be happy to talk about it in closed session. All right, let me ask the council if there's a desire to um, have a quick briefing on, cl on spot zoning in closed session. I would, yeah, I would like that. I, I would too. I'm not sure if it needs to be in closed session, though, but if you guys want to do it, that's fine with me. Should be in closed session. All right, let, um, so let me have a motion then. I make a motion. I'll second. All right. All in uh, discussion on the motion. Are all in favor of going to closed session briefly uh, to consult with the town attorney? Please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. All right. We will go into closed session briefly. We should be back shortly.
I'd like to call the meeting back to order. We're now back in open session. Uh, so where we left off, um, we had closed the public hearing and we went into closed session to consult with the attorney. We have done so. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, ask if there is, is discussion from the council uh, that may lead us to a motion or if there is indeed a motion to be made. Mayor, I'd like to hear from Ms. Diane, I'm, I'm sorry to do this to you, The um, what is currently the allowable uses in that district, please? Use the microphone, please. She will. I think you can hear me. She's, no, she's. You cannot. <laughs> you cannot. She hasn't begun speaking yet. <laughs> just, just in case you were worried. She hasn't begun yet. Accessory apartment, condominium, congregate living facility with a special use permit, duplex, family care home, multifamily or apartment, nursing or convalescent facility with a special use permit, single family, townhouse, townhouse detached, triplex or quadplex, assembly hall, nonprofit with a special use permit, assembly hall for profit with a special use permit. Church or place of worship with a special use permit would be for daycare or a homeless shelter. Daycare facility, government service, school public or private. Communication tower, camouflage stealth with a special use permit. Utility minor, wireless support structure, wireless communication facility, botanical garden, greenway, Park Active, Park Passive, Recreation Facility Private, Restaurant drive through Restaurant General, Medical or Dental Office or Clinic, Office Business or Professional, Better Breakfast with a Special Use Permit, Barber and Beauty Shop, Bookstore, Convenience Store, Dry Cleaners and Laundry Service, Financial Institution, Floral Shop, Greenhouse or Nursery Retail, Grocery Specialty, Health Fitness Center or Spa, newsstand or gift shop, personal service, pharmacy, real estate sales, general sale, retail sales general, studio for art, tailor shop, pet services. And then there are limitations in the small town character district, which this is located. So I will read those. You mentioned medical and dental. Is that, was that on accident? That's included in that? Oh, those were all the ones that are allowed. That's not what I that was asked to read. No. I was asked to read what's in the MORR district. I will have Liz come up and read the four that are in the application that she reviewed, if that's what you were asking. No, I was, we want to know what could be allowed there now. But it could be if you were to rezone it with all of the allowable uses. We do not think these are all appropriate in this location. The ones that are appropriate in this location are the ones, please come up here. The four that were in the application are appropriate for this location, in our opinion. So what is currently allowed under the rezoning case from 2005 is single family, um, office, business, or professional, bed and breakfast with a special use permit. And the additional request is for? Medical or office. Dental office. But a, you mentioned restaurant, restaurant as a business. Could that possibly go in there under... We would not office. recommend it. We do yeah. not, as staff, think that's an appropriate use yeah. for that particular location, and that's why we do conditional zoning so that we can talk about uses that are appropriate in very specific locations. Councilman Moyer, did that address your question, or do you want to follow up? 
I'd like to ask a follow-up question and make sure I understand. So the MORR district that this property resides in currently is only allowed three uses and they're asking for the fourth. That is correct. Okay, but all the other properties aren't subject to this in the MORR district? All the uses All of you the read? MORR um, z properties <clears throat> are conditionally zoned or have conditional use permits associated with them. They all are limited in their uses. They have different uses depending on where they are located. Okay. None of them allow all these uses, but if we were to have a rezoning that allowed all the uses, that's what I was asked, I thought, to read. That's what I was reading. <coughs> if that wasn't the question, I apologize. You did good. No, I think that's, what that's what I understood. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, thank you. Um, Councilman Jensen or Moyer, did you, I didn't know if you had any further thoughts. Are we discussing prior to making a motion or something? Um, this is discussion leading to a motion or a motion, whichever, <coughs> whichever strikes anyone's fancy. Or anyone. I, in, I, any I was certainly concerned about parking. I'm less concerned at this point. If you want to start the discussion. Um, some of the things that I was looking for would be to ensure that the staff parked off street, which that's already been proposed. Um, I looked at the proposal was something like 25 patients per day, and that comes out to um, about four or five patients per hour which would say the maximum number of cars that are going to come in here per hour or would be parked on the, on the street if that was the worst case or in the Baptist uh, parking lot would be four to five. That's the, dip, that's the delta in cars. But on the other hand, that delta in cars, well, that number of cars is already impacting this because that's what the dental office is serving around the corner. So. Um, while I was concerned about parking, I will say I'm not so concerned at this point, and I would love to hear anybody else's thoughts. Yeah, I share your thoughts. Um, to me, the parking is not a, really an issue. I mean, employees will park in an Apex Baptist Church parking lot. Um, they're not going to, there's so, so few cars as far as I'm concerned compared to what's downtown. It's really going to be insignificant. Um, so I'm not concerned about parking at all. At all. I do feel it's, um, it is a good idea to have a dentist around the corner so that kind of frees up a spot for retail in downtown. So anytime you get more retail downtown, it's a good thing. Plus those patients that do come down, it's a draw to downtown so they can shop, eat lunch or whatever also downtown. So to me, it enhances the downtown business uh, environment. I can go. Um, you know, I appreciate um, all the conversation on for lack of a better word, both sides um, of this um, um, item that we're discussing tonight. Um, I was most concerned um, that we had, you know, several potential uses and that one particular out of all of those was sort of singled out um, very intentionally. And so um, in listening to people who feel that they are most impacted, who are the folks who are there you know, living there versus um, as a business or in enjoying the businesses there. Um, I think if our parking situation was better, um, I would like, I sure wish it were better um, for us, and maybe that's, this is maybe raising an issue for us to really do that sooner rather than later. But based on the folks who feel most impacted who are going to share, not share business parking, but share residential parking, um, is something that I'm going to be um, this time consistent with what the planning board said at this time and what the most impacted people feel until we get our parking stuff situated. Yes, so, so okay. we go. Can I just mention one other thing? I'm sorry, I forgot to mention. Regarding the spot zoning, uh, our legal attorney uh, vice says it's not a spot uh, zoning case. Uh, and also the issue about adaptive reuse uh, clause in the UDO. Uh, we're also advised that our town planner uh, you know, gave her interpretation and said it's not an issue. So just want to get that on the record. Yeah, so, um, you know, I would echo uh, my, my uh, 
colleagues' uh, concerns about the parking, uh, you know, four to five people an hour just doesn't seem, uh, you know, very tremendous. And they're actually going to be closer to the Baptist parking lot, so they're probably going to park closer to the business, which is in the Baptist church parking lot. So um, it's going to open a space downtown. I like that. Uh, another opportunity for another business, uh, you know, to go in, uh, you know, downtown on Salem Street. Um, you know, parking is something that we have on our CIP plan for downtown Apex, uh, you know, maybe potentially a parking garage or uh, cleaning up, you know, Seaboard Street. And, um, you know, so that's that's something that's definitely coming to hopefully help everybody downtown there. I know it's a, um, uh, you know, it is what it is right now. But if I'm looking at a business to have as a neighbor in a district that's zoned for businesses already, I think a dentist office is a pretty good one to have. Um, I don't know about you, but not to make light of the situation, but dentists always seem to be on vacation or off, <laughs> so <laughs> half days, Fridays, and limited hours during the week. So um, I, I think that's a, a pretty good neighbor to have. And um, you know, this business, of course, is, is going to be investing a lot in a, a facelift of their business. So I'm, I'm in support of this. I, I'd like to say one little last thing. Uh, it was noted that the chiropractic office apparently doesn't take advantage of the of the uh, Apex Baptist parking lot. Um, and that would be a concern in this situation, but it sounds like uh, the applicant has already informed all the, her patients. I would hope somehow that staff might talk with the chiropractic office, no matter how this goes, and get them to back go back into the uh, Apex Baptist lot. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion we approve. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion on the motion? Yes, I would like to uh, maybe uh, direct the planning committee uh, to maybe look at this business district and see if it needs to go any further down Chatham Street um, or if maybe we need to limit how far it's going down Chatham Street. This was, I think, rezoned to this in 2005, if I remember. What we were talking about. I think what we can do, if Councilman Jensen is amenable, is to ask staff to just include it in the 2045 um, Apex Advance, Advance Apex uh, project, uh, where we're doing the rework and we can include it in that. Um, I think planning staff would be happy to do that, don't you? Great. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. If there's no further discussion on the motion to approve, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. No. All right, that passes three to one. And that concludes public hearing number one. Um, I'll pause for a moment for those who want to uh, leave while we get ready for public hearing number four. Hey, did we? Forgotten. Did we take care of them? Did we do this one? Uh -oh. oh, I did. We did. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> you uh, stop the agenda with that change. Yeah. But we did. We didn't actually continue it, though, did we? Did we? I we did. Wait, yeah, I did. We did. We did unanimously. I just didn't write the vote down. Oh yeah. I see because I got the note. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Wes, Wes. No, Bill made the motion. Okay, we got it. Minor panic. <laughs> Thought I didn't do it. Because I didn't see my vote. Usually, when I write a vote, I, write, I circle the vote. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it. All right. So, uh, if you could um, pull the door, last one out, that'd be great. Thank you. All right. At this time, we'll move on to public hearing number four. Uh, this is a public hearing and possible motion to adopt an ordinance on the question of annexation. Uh, Diane Ken, the planning director, is presenting. Uh, the applicant, Sean Smith, is here, and he would like to address the council. All right, thank you. Mr. Smith? Um, and just for the, for the record, for the public, for yourself and the town clerk, um, since you're the applicant, um, as per our policy, uh, you have nine minutes to make your case. Okay. Um, actually, uh, as the applicant and uh, the owner of the property, we'd like to ask for this uh, hearing to be continued to oh, October see. 17th. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Smith. Pause one second. Let me ask the council if anybody has a question for Mr. Smith or 
we can accommodate this if that's all right. I do. What's your uh, reason for? Uh, we're working pushing? through a minor subdivision. We want to make sure that we have that in hand prior to the annexation. Um, the annexation really is is you know, <coughs> in falling in line with that. You don't want to be taxed until you know you have to be, right? Yes, sir. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, is there a motion from the council? So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to uh, continue this to October 17th. Any discussion on that motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll got you, Mr. Smith. Um, the, the, he wanted to work through uh, some minor subdivision details before he brings it back to the town. So he's asked for a continuance to October 17th. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Well, the applicant has the right to ask he does. one continuance. He does. Period, so it's an almost an automatic. Yeah, he, he, he could say he dropped his pen and he wants to wait in two more weeks. That's fine. He, That's gets, right. he gets one for free. Bingo card, right? Uh, any, any discussion on that motion? No. Yeah. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. All right, that passes unanimously. We have continued public hearing number four until October 17th. And that will be at the regularly scheduled meeting right here. <clears throat> we now uh, conclude public hearing. And at this time, uh, we move into old business. So at this time, I'll turn the floor over to Mr. Drew Havens, our town manager, who wants to bring us up to date on a bid process for a parcel. Mayor, members of council, uh, you will recall that we had an offer to purchase a piece of land owned by the town at the junction of, um, this is going to be a different one actually, Kathy, sorry about that, um, of Highway 55 and 64. Uh, council rejected that offer. Um, we've had another offer to purchase that piece of land from the same uh, group. I've asked Mr. Adams uh, to join us here tonight, and he's prepared some maps to give you of a better understanding of what this parcel of land is made up of um, and uh, help you better understand where we're coming from as far as uh, our opinion of the offer on the table now being a much fairer offer to the taxpayers and um, one worthy of your consideration. Mr. Adams, would you just walk the council through the, the site so they're sure. familiar with it? Thank you. This is probably one you're more familiar with. It's the uh, property behind Fiddlesticks where we used to have the pump station that was abandoned a while back. <clears throat> this map shows the light green area is the majority of their parcel, not the part down here that's already owned by the town to the bottom right. The dark green area is a flood zone area. And if you can see there's a note there that says it's an 18-foot drop in grade. Is that not on? <laughs> okay. There's an 18-foot drop in grade from more or less the fiddlestick site down to the bottom of the creek. So there's going to be some substantial site work done to make this buildable. One of the other foot drop from the, okay. The black line there, the black dotted line. Yeah. Okay. I don't think right. It's right here. It all the topo pushes it that way. And if you look on the other map, let me zoom in some here. Okay. The same parcel, this shows all the easements that we don't typically record easements on our own property when we, own, when we install utilities, but they're going to dedicate these easements over the existing utilities to us. And as you can see, there's a power line along 55 and 64, there's a sewer easement going through, and in the bottom right-hand corner, we did ask them to dedicate a greenway easement. Um, the blue line again, blue area is again the area that is the stream bed that really is not buildable. Um, again, it's going to take a lot of site work to bring that up to the same level as the Fiddlesticks parking lot. And since I believe this is a recombination, they're going to use both these parcels to get, make one parcel buildable. I think that's why we ended up at the price we were at. Can you point out the Greenway easement, please? Sure. It's right here. comes out of the back of the Peak Charter comes down and then connects to the town-owned property down here in the right-hand corner. 
we went out, Angela Rinke now went out and flagged that and had their surveyor go out and pick it up. So they've already got it, the, the meets and bounds pulled out for us. Okay. What, what in your estimate, is the uh, net buildable property on this thing? Really, this white area that has the easement going through it right here, maybe maybe three acres. Okay. Three acres? Yes, sir. You can't really, you could fill part of this, but you could not, you'd have to revegetate. You cannot put anything permanent inside of it. I did clear that with Mike Deaton before I decided to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> the, Santa, the sewer easement could be an obstacle as well. I mean, they could potentially relocate that at their expense. But uh, you might get three acres out of it. The square on the, I guess, the south side, is that the old pump station? Yes, it is. Is that, the, right. is that not a part of the property? It's, it? all, it's all part of it's it. It's all part of it, okay. All right. The pump station is, was dismantled. Is the right. building gone now, or is it still That's, hanging around? It's been dismantled, as far as I know. The only thing left there is part of the pad and the old uh, well site. So they, would t they could take that out, and we've abandoned, we have not included the easements for that as part of the dedication. I thought we might charge them extra for that. <laughs> you know what they tend to use the property for? I do not. Under the current zoning of the property, what's the, what's the buffer along that on-ramp? I would defer to Diane for that. I'm not sure. I'm not. What does the UDL require? Another? Where the e sewer easement and the power line easements are? 50B. Sorry. Minimum. For non-residential use, it's a 50-foot buffer provided they do pedestrian connectivity and they have they limit the amount of EFIS. For residential, they would have to do a 100-foot buffer. Along the on-ramp? It's, it's treated just like the rest of the highway. <coughs> and that's an A buffer we have along the highway. Uh, yes, it would be an a type A buffer for both of those. Okay. May I ask a question then? What, what does staff want us to do just to put this up for so upset if, bid again? If, if the offer that they're making is 240000 and that's what they'll start the upset bid process with. What we're looking for is the, to adopt that resolution if the council believes that to be an offer that they would entertain. Because they don't want to get to the end of the process like they did the last time and have the council reject, reject the offer. Well, what is, um, what do we do with this proceeds from this sale? Do they go to also other land acquisition costs? Does it go back into the general budget? It goes into the general fund. Back into the general? General fund revenue, yeah. All right. Which, yeah, which is effectively fine. would offer the offset. Council salary. Yeah, counts as a bonus. It's <laughs> 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 the council retirement fund. <laughs> so, we, Steve and I have, have discussed this. And, <laughs> the appraisal that they had done, I, my opinion as a former appraiser, I think they were a little aggressive in their pricing. Uh, I'm not an appraiser licensed in the state of North Carolina, but that seemed to be a little aggressive given the, the conditions of this. Yeah, 18 feet um, of drop is similar to the place where we just built the fire station. Um, uh -huh. It's that much of, of a fall. So that's the site limitation. Um, my opinion is 240 is a much more reasonable offer for the taxpayers. It gets the gets his land back on the tax rolls. Uh, it's not doing really, not doing us any good at this point. Um, we would convey it. it subject to council's approval of that, um, would, it would convey subject to all the easements that are in place. So we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be losing any, any utility of this lot. What's the annual tax, property tax for this, do you know? Um, right now, zero. I don't know what it would, I don't know what it would assess okay. for, Mr. Schultz, I, okay. I can't. All right. I was curious, that was a good point, so it's additional tax money too. You compared it to the uh, firehouse yeah. site. Yeah. No use some of oh, yeah. it's farther out. What do we pay per acre uh, for that firehouse site? Can we get that? At, I mean, we can approve the upset bidding process to start, but uh, I'd, I'd, I'd kind of like to get an idea. Just to, I'm not an appraiser either. Well, you were an appraiser. I, One thing I would point out about that site versus this one is there was 
access to this one is much more restrictive. You can only get to this site through the Fiddlesticks parking lot. Yes, I understand it. So, well, I'm, each of us have a gun at each other's head, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> so, we, again, you know, the, the first offer they made, I, you know, I don't believe was a reasonable one. What was that? As a taxpayer. That was 200000 200, um, but this one I believe to be much more reasonable. Yeah. So we're looking for a motion for to adopt a resolution to begin the upset bid process, assuming that you, you believe that 240,000 is a fair offer to consider. Now, of course, somebody <coughs> could upset that bid mm -hmm. sure. and bid mm -hmm. more for it than that. Um, but <laughs> that's only in our favor, though. Correct. Yeah. I, I see this as reasonable. I'll make the motion. I think okay. it's I think it's reasonable. I'll second it. Yeah. There's a motion to approve the resolution authorizing sale and upset bid process. The upset bid process takes one month? Okay. Ten days. Pardon me? Ten days. Ten days. Um, Ten days. <laughs> Councilman Moyer, I got your... Pardon me? Um, From the time that it's advertised. And they, they, they are required to make a deposit of 10% of their offer. The, we have their money from the $200,000 offer. They have not requested the refund yet, so they'll need to give us a little more money and then it can be advertised, and that will start the 10 day, 10 -day period. Uh, before we go any further, let me just clarify on the process. Uh, Councilman Moore, you made the motion. Um, did I hear a second? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so we have a motion and a second to um, adopt a resolution to begin the upset bid process for this parcel. Uh, any further discussion on that motion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. All right, that passes unanimously. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Oh, but you're not leaving yet, <clears throat> because unfinished business number number one. Uh, this is a possible motion to approve a contract with Green Power NC. Maybe that's what we'll do with the money. Uh, okay. It will take only a small part of the money. Yeah, oh, small part. Okay. So, uh, we so have other ones. So this is uh, to approve, consider uh, to approve a contract with Green Power. NC for the lease purchase of solar photovoltaic electric generation system to be installed in the public works operations building and authorized town manager, et cetera, et cetera. Please continue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I'm just going to run through a, just a real quick history and purpose of this project. So the purpose is to dip our toe into photovoltaic on town facilities. So <coughs> intended to demonstrate the physical and financial feasibility of putting solar PV on our, uh, on our buildings. A little bit of history. On um, February 2nd, this council directed staff um, to solicit proposals from solar energy providers to put uh, solar systems on the Public Works Operations Building and Public Safety Station 5. Um, we had to work out some details with Electricities uh, based on our uh, power supply contract and some other details, more of the technical details of um, a solar system, not solar system, a solar system, you get it. Um, so on May, on, on May 5th, we did um, put out an RFP um, to a, we direct, by direct mail to 11 contractors that we identified um, in North Carolina, and, and the, the RFP was also posted on our website. <clears throat> June 8th, uh, we received and evaluated responses from six vendors. And then following that on the 20th of June, we came back to council, presented the results of the RFP. Uh, Green Power NC out of Greenville, North Carolina was the lowest responsive bidder to the RFP. They also, they Green Power also provided us with an option of a lease purchase rather than an outright purchase. The lease purchase was at a lower cost to the town. Council then directed staff to evaluate that option. Um, this chart just shows the results of the RFP. You saw this at your meeting uh, when we reported these results to you. So you can see that the, uh, the outright purchase is, is in, the, in the top part of this. And then Green Power, um, their lease purchase, you can see, is, is considerably less money. <clears throat> Since July, we haven't just been sitting on our hands. <laughs> um, Green Power NC, this is, a, this is a new arrangement for them. So they did not have an agreement that they could just hand us and say, here, take this back to your council and execute this. 
they were working at a time with another uh, local government to try to work out an arrangement with them. The talks between the Green Power and that other local government stalled um, and they weren't making progress on getting the, the lease purchase um, arrangement or the lease purchase document drafted. Um, our assistant town attorney, Brian Meyer, um, Lori asked him and he volunteered, and Brian's here, uh, to work out this uh, lease purchase arrangement with Green Power NC. So that's, that's what's been happening from July until now. I know it's moving at the speed of government, but we do now have um, a lease purchase um, agreement that we can recommend to you. Just a little bit about the project. Um, originally, when we did the RFP, we said we were going to do two buildings, Public Works Operation and Public Safety Station 5. We don't yet own Public Safety Station 5, but we feel that the timing is right and time is kind of of the essence. We want to move forward with getting a project online. So what we're coming to you tonight with is an agreement with Green Power NC to put a system on the Public Works Operations Building shown here with the red arrow. It's a little over 30 kilowatt system. Um, it does have a 25-year production guarantee. So Solar, the solar panels, and Mr. Jensen can speak much more eloquently about this than I can, but solar panels will degrade in their ability to produce power by about 1% per year. Um, we factored that into our analysis, um, but they have guaranteed that in 25 years, they still will be producing 80% of their rated value. There's a 12-year 12, 12 manufacturer warranty on the panels, 25-year warranty on the optimizers. Um, the this, this system does come with web-based monitoring, so we'll be able to tell what level of power output that we're getting and be sure that we're actually generating the power we say that we're generating. Um, when we talked to you uh, back in, in June about the payback for this, we talked about um, payback in about eight years, and that eight-year payback is based on our utility rates, factoring in the changes in the utility rates that Electra Cities is anticipating. So there'd be a slight increase in the wholesale rate coming from Electra Cities in two years and three years, and then an, an a 8.5% decrease in those rates in year 10. I don't have that right in front of me. But, so as once the debt is rolled off of, the, of, of our obligation to Electra City, so our rates will go down that's the wholesale rate. That's nothing to do with this project. No, yeah. other than th that, all that is factored into the payback that you see. So in eight years, we will have saved enough money in electric costs to pay for this system under this lease purchase arrangement. If we were going to do the outright purchase, it would take about 14 years in order to, to achieve payback in energy savings. So what's due at signing um, is $30,250. In five years, when the lease term ends, we'll give them $3,025, and then we will own the system outright. So that's what makes us a lease purchase. Um, what we're asking from the council tonight is uh, the consideration of a motion to approve the draft contract that you have um, and authorize myself and the town attorney's office to make any additional minor modifications and then go ahead and execute the contract. And then also before you um, is, I mean, this was placed at your, at your place tonight, the, the budget amendment in the staff packet or the agenda packet was incorrect. This is the correct amount, so asking you to approve budget amendment number eight in the amount of $30,250 and that will take money out of fund balance and put it into capital improvements in facilities in order to make this project go. That's what I have. I'll answer any questions the council may have. I asked about this last time. What about maintenance costs? Is that factor in? Maintenance, I mean, as far as the, the system itself, they will maintain it. So um, if, if anything breaks, it's all covered under warranty during this lease period. So they will, they will fix that. The maintenance, my understanding of the maintenance of this is if you have to clean them, you can go up on the roof and clean them. Mr. Jensen is much I'll more experienced with mm -hmm. solar than I am. I'll bring my ladder. You got uh, climbing Jensen shoes? Jensen just volunteered. I'll climbing volunteer shoes. To clean them. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing. I mean, they're solid state. It's like a television set almost. Nice. And uh, they just don't break. Um, 
Oh yeah, we are, they guarantee for 25 years to be still generating at 80 percent. What kind of like assurances do we have that they'll still be a business, or if they go out of business, how's that work? Can I answer that? Sure. That, that's the solar panel manufacturer, and they're going to choose a tier one type manufacturer. They will, in all likely, be here just as much as Ford Corporation or any others. They're, they're big corporations that manufacture these panels. Um, There's no, con we have no contractual assurance that they will still be in business no, in 25 can, years. But if they are and we're at 75 percent, then we can recover. And, and it, the ones that were built in the 70s kept going for 40 years, actually, many of them, and the technology has improved substantially since then. If, so. if this is approved tonight, when does installation, when do you plan installation to start? Uh, that will be up to the, the vendor. Um, we'll execute the contract um, as soon as practical. I don't believe there's a whole lot left on the contract, Mr. Meyer. There's not. There's uh, only a few points that we've uh, just about finished. Once it's signed, they're going to install within 30 days of the time of contract. Yeah. And, and the only thing that I could see from my own standpoint is um, it's 30 kilowatts. They have to make sure that they can get the proper number of panels up there with some of the new setback uh, requirements. The fire chief can minimize those setback requirements and ensure probably that we can get 30. So at the very worst, uh, this, it, it, this thing would decrease a little bit in price and we'll have just a little bit smaller system, but it's all, all based on the same dollars per production watt, and that's what all counts. When do you plan to have your first um, fancy production report to us on how it's producing? after installation? The, uh, it, One day after it starts. Next, the next monthly report? Well, well yeah. yeah. It, we, can, we can certainly include that in the managed monthly report. I, you know, and the only reason <laughs> I'm hesitating is, uh, you know, our email doesn't even work right now. So I, <laughs> I don't want to rely on technology uh, to be able to produce a report. But yeah. as, soon as, as soon as it's practical, we'll, we'll, we'll get the council. It doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, my last question was, um, I think this came up last time, is mm -hmm. the reason this company can offer it cheaper by, for a lease is because they're getting some kind of uh, uh, refund from the government or grant or whatever you want to call it. Mm. I can't speak to their business model. Um, I know that they're contractually obligated to us to provide it for one dollar a watt and ten cents a watt at the end of the lease. Um, what their business model is, how they make that that delta work, Mr. Jensen can probably discuss that with you offline if you'd like. But that's yeah. I'll be happy to discuss it with you yeah. if you'd like. Uh, do you want it now or offline? Probably offline would be better. Okay. Well, I I, I could. I think I'm legally allowed to talk about it, am I? What my guess? I'm not sure. It's my you're guess of what <laughs> I can guess what their model is because, but so can I. So that's right. There's there is federal tax credits to private enterprise uh, of 30 percent of the cost of the system. Plus, you're allowed to depreciate. Since the town does not pay taxes, there is no opportunity for the town as a entity to take advantage of any tax credits. So. Um, this is a situation where a private enterprise can do it cheaper than the town can do it directly. That's where it's at. All right. Is there a motion? Or? I'll make a motion to uh, proceed with this contract. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to proceed with the contract. And just to be clear, this is to approve the draft contract and authorize the town manager to make additional minor modifications and execute it. And approve the budget amendment number eight. Is that acceptable? Yes, I forgot about yes, budget amendment number eight. All right. Did it cover everything there, Mr. Town yes, Manager? Yes, sir. Please speak into the microphone so we can. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. He's not yes, sir. Is there, is there is there any discussion on that motion? I'm excited to see this thing and and see what uh, how it works out for us and saves us money on our power. I'm excited about. It. Basically, we're we'll be making a rate of return of about eight eight percent. A little more, eight and a half percent, I think. I just roughed the numbers, so it's very good for the town. All right. Is there uh, is there any other comments? All right. I'll call for the vote. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. All right. That passes unanimously. Um, and uh, just as a request, I think once it's installed, I think the council wouldn't mind an invitation to come down and see the panel that controls.
you know, and how it's set up just to kind of get a feel for it so we can see what what it looks like installed on our equipment. I think to use your phrase, dipping the toe in the water, I think this is a good way to do it. Um, if it works out great, then we've figured out something that we can try to tap into for the future. And if it doesn't pan out, then we can evaluate why, maybe do a post-mortem on the uh, project and figure out is there something we can do better or maybe do we abandon the idea. I think that's the whole point, right? Yeah, it, it is to get our toe in the water and very conservatively, these things are all over the place and they pan out every time. So uh, I, you know, unless there is a lightning strike on that building that knocks it down, I think we will find... Uh, I expect we'll have insurance for that, though, right? We do. Our, our regular insurance covers, covers that. And incidentally, we, this is actually the second PV system we have in the town uh, out in the... Uh, uh, park uh, off of Kelly um, at the nature park we have a small system of eight kilowatts at that time the cost was very high the cost has come way down which makes this this one very viable yes, that would have been dipping the pinky toe yeah that was a, very much of a dip in the pinky toe <laughs> all right having taken care of that matter that concludes all of our open session items we do have one closed session item left on the agenda so I'd ask the council if uh, someone would make a motion for us to go into closed session to discuss a personnel matter. So moved. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. All right, let the public be advised. We're going into closed session. There is no other business after that. Um, we don't know how long we'll be in there. Thank you.